Hi, welcome to Why Bayes' Theorem is Important, Part 1. So today we're talking about Bayes' Theorem, something so important it's in the channel logo. Bayes' Theorem is an important relation in probability relating conditional probabilities, and it is critical for interpreting data. This video is the first in a three-part series on the role of Bayes' theorem in interpreting experimental results. Here, in part one, we'll briefly review the notation in Bayes' theorem and show its use in a simple example. This example will involve choosing marbles of different colors out of a bag at random and using the results to draw conclusions about the contents of the bag. This example will provide an outline of how we use Bayes' theorem to obtain the probability that a hypothesis is true, given experimental data. In part two, we'll do a somewhat more sophisticated example about radioactive decay, which will utilize Gaussian error bars. Both part one and part two will be warm-up exercises for understanding the role of Bayes' theorem in the interpretation of a more realistic measurement, which will be the goal of part three. If you're new to Bayes' theorem, you might want to watch the video Introduction to Bayes' Theorem, available on this channel. It's not strictly required in order to understand what's going on here, but it might make things a bit clearer. Okay, let's get started. So first, let's give Bayes' theorem and define our notation. So Bayes' theorem goes as follows. P of A given B equals P of B given A times P of A divided by P of B. So here, P of A is the probability of A and P of B is the probability of B. P of A given B and P of B given A are conditional probabilities. P of A given B is the probability of A given that B is true, and P of B given A is the probability of B given that A is true. So Bayes' theorem reads as follows. The probability of A given that B is true is equal to the probability of B, given that A is true, times the probability of A divided by the probability of B. Okay, now that we've given Bayes' theorem, let's give a quick example of how to use it. We will go through this example twice. The first time, we'll solve the problem without an explicit reference to Bayes' theorem. The second time, we'll apply Bayes' theorem directly. Okay, let's describe our scenario. So I have two identical containers. We'll call them container one and container two, although they are not visibly labeled. In each container, I will drop 10 marbles. So into container one, I drop seven red marbles and three green marbles. Into container two, I drop four red marbles and six green marbles. I now take the two containers behind a screen so you can't see them. I randomly select one of the two containers and give it to you. I do not tell you which container I have given you. Now you are allowed to reach into the container and, without looking, select one marble. After you select a marble, you may note its color. So, you select a marble. It is green. Now, what is the probability that I have given you container 1, and what is the probability that I have given you container 2? So, here, I have given you container 1 and I have given you container 2 are hypotheses. Our goal is to use our experimental data, 
namely the data that the marble is green, to deduce the probability of each of these hypotheses being true. To do this, let's imagine that we repeated this experiment many, many times. Each time, I put seven red marbles and three green marbles into container one, and I put four red marbles and six green marbles into container two. Each time, I randomly select a container to give to you. And each time you select a marble, Let's figure out what would happen, on average. So, as a first step, let's get the probabilities that you would draw a red or green marble if I handed you container 1. Container 1 has 7 red marbles and 3 green marbles, for a total of 10 marbles. We'll assume that each marble is equally likely to be drawn, so if I hand you container 1, your probability of selecting a red marble is 70%, and the probability that you would select a green marble is 30%. We can write these two statements as P of red, given container 1, equals 70%, and P of green, given container 1, equals 30%. Similarly, if I handed you container 2, the probability that you choose a red marble is 40%, and the probability that you would choose a green marble is 60%. So P of red, given 2, is equal to 40%, and P of green, given 2, is equal to 60%. Okay. So now that we have those four conditional probabilities, we can enumerate what would happen if we repeated this experiment many, many times on average. Okay, so we've put those four results up in the upper right-hand corner because we'll need them in a minute. So out of all of the trials, I hand you container 1 50% of the time, and I hand you container 2 50% of the time. Of those instances in which I hand you container 1, you choose a red marble 70% of the time, and you choose a green marble 30% of the time. Out of those instances in which I hand you container 2, you choose a red marble 40% of the time, and a green marble 60% of the time. So, we get the following probabilities. 35% of the time, I hand you container 1, and you choose a red marble. 15% of the time, I hand you container 1, and you choose a green marble. 20% of the time, I hand you container 2, and you choose a red marble. And 30% of the time, I hand you container 2, and you choose a green marble. So now we've worked out the probabilities for all of the possible ways that I could hand you a container and you could choose a marble. But what we want are the probabilities that I handed you container 1 or container 2 given that you chose a green marble. So we want to look at only the possible ways that you could have chosen a green marble. So there are two ways that you could have chosen a green marble. I could have handed you container 1 and you chose a green marble. That has a probability of 15%. Or I could have handed you container 2 and you could have chosen a green marble. That has a probability of 30%. Out of a large number of trials, on average, you would be handed container 1 and choose a green marble 15% of the time, and be handed container 2 and choose a green marble 30% of the time. So you would choose a green marble in a total of 45%, that's 15% plus 30% of trials. In the rest of the trials, 
you would choose a red marble out of one of the containers. So, out of the 45% of trials where you chose a green marble, you chose it out of container 1 in 15% of the trials, and out of container 2 in 30% of the trials. So, the probability that I've given you container 1, given that you chose a green marble, which we call P of 1 given green, is 15% divided by 45%, which equals 1 -third. Similarly, the probability that I've given you container 2, given that you chose a green marble, so that's P of 2 given green, is 30% divided by 45%, which equals 2 thirds. So given that you chose a green marble, the probability that I gave you container 1 is 1 third, and the probability that I gave you container 2 is 2 thirds. This is the result that we want. So now, let's solve the same problem using Bayes' theorem. Let's get the probability that I gave you container 1, given that you chose a green marble, so P of 1 given green. So we substitute 1, in other words, that you have container 1, for A, and green, in other words, that you chose a green marble, for B. So Bayes' theorem, P of A given B, equals P of B given A times P of A divided by P of B, with 1 substituted for A and green substituted for B, gives P of 1 given green equals P of green given 1 times the probability of 1 divided by the probability of green. Okay. So we have our relation from the previous slide. Let's look at each factor in this equation. So first, P of green, given 1, is the probability that you choose a green marble given that I hand you container 1. We saw that this is 30%, as container 1 held 7 red marbles and 3 green marbles. Okay, so again, our equation. P of 1 is the probability that I gave you container 1, irrespective of what marble you choose. If you don't use any information from choosing a marble, the probability that I gave you container 1 is 50%. And lastly, P of green is the probability that you choose a green marble irrespective of what container I give you. We saw in the previous calculation that you choose a green marble on average in 45% of all trials. So P of green is equal to 45%. So we have P of green given 1 equals 30%. P of 1 equals 50%, and P of green equals 45%. Thus we get that P of 1 given green equals 30% times 50% divided by 45%, and that equals 1 third. And this is the same answer as we got before. Now, note that the calculation we went through using Bayes' theorem is exactly the same calculation we did when we worked out the probabilities from first principles. So Bayes' theorem gave that P of 1 given green equals P of green given 1 times P of 1 divided by P of green. Let's look at where these factors are in our picture from before. So P of 1 was the probability that I hand you container 1. That was 50%. P of green, given 1, was the 30% probability that you choose a green marble, given that I handed you container 1. And lastly, 
we took the 15% and the 30% at the bottom of the page and added those together. Those summed to P of green. So Bayes' theorem just reflects the picture we drew the first time around. By the way, we could also get P of 2 given green. So Bayes' theorem becomes P of 2 given green equals P of green given 2 times P of 2 divided by P of green. We won't work it through here, but it gives the same result we found before. P of 2 given green equals 2 thirds. Okay. So let's summarize. Here we have gone through a simple example of how we can use experimental data, here the color of a marble chosen from a container, to assign probabilities to hypotheses, here the hypotheses that I have given you container 1 or container 2. We calculated these probabilities from first principles and from Bayes' theorem and saw that we got the same answer. We also saw that Bayes' theorem just encoded the calculation that we did the first time around. Now, this exercise is just a schematic for how we can use experimental data to assign probabilities to hypotheses. In part two, we will move a bit closer to a realistic scenario by using an example which involves Gaussian error bars. And finally, in part three, we'll discuss what conclusions we can draw about the true values of physical parameters from measurements and their uncertainties.